I'm Sarah Holbrook and I'm here with Minds of Mountain Film and I'm sitting with Louis and I'm so glad to have you here. Thanks, good to be here. Yeah, so you came here first. Your film preceded you, if I'm correct. You made The Cove. Mm -hmm. It came here without you as a sneak peek mm -hmm. four years ago? I think it was four years ago. And then it came back again the following year with you. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah, and it was. It, my staff showed the film here, and they said you got to see this film festival. And I was like, you know, it, to be honest, I thought, well, how could it, it could it be a great film festival because it's in Colorado. It's like a prophet <laughs> in its own country is never respected. And I, so I came down, you know, sort of like begrudgingly, and it was like, oh my God, this place is just, not just beautiful, but like it was, it's the best film festival I've ever been to, and I think I could say with some authority that. Um, you know, I've probably been to about 40 of them now, mm. you know, from Sundance to, to Cannes out of, out of competition, but geez, this is a, but by far the best film festival. Because mm -hmm. it, it's, it's just the vibe that you're, you're with your environmentalist activists, adventurers, it's like our people. Mm. And, the, you know, you walk down the street and talk to everybody and it's just yeah. comfortable. It is very intimate here, isn't it? It is. Yeah. yeah. You meet great people, new people every time they come back. Mm -hmm. And what brings you here to this festival, aside from the vibe and how great it is this year? What are you here with? Your husband asked me to talk. <laughs> 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 um, no, Good I, job, I, I love to. I love to uh, to see new films and mm -hmm. you know be on the uh, see what's going on. Mm -hmm. and I'm, you know, so I've only saw really a couple films so far but mm. geez the, the the bar just keeps on getting raised mm -hmm. I mean it's just it's almost like the ski film I saw yesterday <laughs> with the where, where everybody's like you know I thought we did a pretty good film and then the next year they just keep on getting better the production values the story the intimacy of the connection to the filmmaker and the subjects it just keeps on getting better and better he's and better. talking about the crash reel by Lucy Walker yeah 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 crazy a, amazing I mean, film. she's so good I mean, mm. she's just scary good and well, the thing, the thing, well, here's, here's the, the one I mentioned this. It's just like, you know, you, you go out into the, let's say, the real narrative film world, and, and it's a competition, right? And here I don't feel like it's a competition. We're all uh, collaborators. We're all, all right. working on parts of the same issue, which is trying to evolve society to the next level. Uh -huh. At least that's how I view the, the yeah. filmmaking here, the films I care about. Sure. Well, this is kind of a cute thing. You uh, said that Lucy's film was kind of amazing. She saw your breakfast talk this morning, and she said that you were phenomenal. So talk a little bit about what you talked about this morning at the breakfast talk. Uh, well, it's a symposium on ocean issues, mm -hmm. sort of oxymoronic that we just talk about oceans in Colorado, but there's more certified divers in Colorado per capita than any other place in the country. That's not true. It is true. For real? Yeah, you look at pat, patty certification. <laughs> really? Because you guys are so desperate. <laughs> <laughs> We're conveniently located between two oceans, that's what I say. <laughs> so um, is Minnesota. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, so, but it was, um, you know, the oceans are important whether you live in Colorado or on the coast because we're losing the oceans very quickly. But the, the, the nutshell is there's been five major extinctions in the history of the planet. We've always lost the oceans previous to the, the, all the five ma major extinctions. For to, real. To acidification. And that's exactly what's going on right now. So that's the beginning of the wave of extinction of land animals is the ocean going south. Well. Yeah. Yeah, down. Yeah, because yeah, uh -huh. you know, you, plankton's responsible for two out of every three breaths you take, whether you live in California or Colorado. And we're losing it at about the rate of 1% a year. So it's, you know, how much oxygen is built up in the atmosphere to sustain? Not enough it? here. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a, it's, a, it's a huge issue. I mean, uh, not only is it the most beautiful environment I've ever been in the world, because you see, you know, this, this is beautiful, but you put your head in the water, you can see thousands of different species in this little microcosm of a coral reef. And to, to go back and, let's say, at 30 years later to see a reef gone, or mm -hmm. 10 years later, yeah. that's going on in our lifetime right now. So to me, it's the, it's the biggest issue humanity faces, not the losing of coral reefs, but the, the acidifying of the ocean, because you lose the oceans, they, it takes about, reefs can come back if you, if you let them alone. Yeah, you know, if, yeah we saw it, that at a pre presentation earlier today, yeah. Yeah, yeah 10 years and they're not okay, but they're much better. Acidification is different. Mm. That's like, you know, it takes, one to seven million years for you know the oceans to bounce back after acidification. So, but but here's the good news. Okay, we're the, we're the only generation alive that can change this thing. It's gonna be by the time your kids have kids, it's gonna be too late. So we're it. Okay, we're, but do we, we have the tools? We have. Well, do we have, we have the have, will? I think <laughs> will you know, tools. We have movies. 
Mm. I think movies are the um, the ultimate weapon of mass construction. You, you Wait a second. Ultimate weapon of, of mass, mass construction. construction. Yeah, you, you, you make a bomb, you kill people, you make a movie, you can galvanize millions of people. Mm. I mean, we did it with the Cove. We, yeah. You know, there's countries that are banning the imported dolphins for dolphin shows. We're saving maybe 10,000 cetaceans a year through the making of film. I think, well, let's raise the bar. Let's actually yeah. not just try to save the animals in this Cove or, you know, cetaceans. Yeah. You know, let's just try to save the... The, the tagline of my organization, I run the Oceanic Preservation Society, sure. is like, we're not trying to save the whole planet, just 70% of it. Just 70% <laughs> of it. And it provides 70% of the oxygen, isn't that what you were saying? Um, it provides 70% of the oxygen, yeah. correct, yeah. Wow. The but ocean, because everybody thinks of trees and photosynthesis and things like that, but they don't necessarily think of what the ocean gives us, aside from fish or swimming. Right. Yeah, yeah. No, recreation. It's, it's, uh, it's the underpinning of all life on the planet. We mm -hmm. lose the oceans. You know, life on, on the land doesn't survive either. Yeah. So this next film is in conjunction with your organization, and it is about? Um, I always, almost don't want to even talk about what it's about, because it's like, I want to go to see that movie I want to describe. <laughs> it's, a, it's like the Avengers, but real. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, it's, 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 we have a lot of the same team coming back from the Cove. It's like we have the real-life Iron Man, Elon Musk. He's helping build an electric getaway car for us. Awesome. It's going to be fun. I, I want to make a movie that's like, popular and exciting and real you know mm -hmm. that's i think that's what that's kind of our brand now i guess you know ops you know that's ops oceanic mm -hmm. preservation society it's sort of like a double entendre we do you know oh ops i get it yeah, it's like it's special like, ops yeah but yeah we do a lot of undercover work in this film we're mm -hmm. um, busting a, wild, a, a international wildlife ring working with federal officials right now can't talk too much about it but it's very exciting mm -hmm. uh because it's um it's because it's exciting for me. How long are we going to have to wait before we, <laughs> um, well, we have it unveiled? Hopefully, hopefully we'll be done in, uh, you know, spring next year. Either early winter, or, uh, I say late winter, early spring. Oh, okay. That we're shooting, shooting yeah. for that. And how much time do we have before ocean acidification is ir irreversible? <sighs> Boy, well, that's the big question. I mean, we're already losing, you know, oysters in the Northwest haven't been a to grow in the larval stage in the last, I think, seven years mm -hmm. in America, you have to they have to sort of monitor the acidification that that uh, before they have the intake valves come in and, and uh, you know replenish the, the stocks of oyster larvae. But the the CO2 in the ocean that's killing that larva because it, it the, my understanding is the way it, uh, CO2 dissolves in the ocean mm -hmm. that's pretty deep. The stuff that's killing it now that was from the 1970s. Oh, so it's just making its way down now. And the stuff that we have now is much more acidic uh -huh. than the stuff that's killing the oysters now. So oh. um, I don't know. I don't yeah. know the answer to that. I don't think anybody knows the answer to that. Mm -hmm. But I just know that, listen, all, all the solutions are all upgrades. You know, at, the, at OPS, we get 140% of our energy off the roof. You mm -hmm. know, we have uh, 120 solar panels. The electric company gives me checks. Mm -hmm. in, in, in December, the darkest month of the year, I, I, I don't get an Excel bill. That's our energy company here. I get a, I get a check. Even in the darkest months? Yeah. Oh. And, uh, you know, I drive electric cars you know, know. In, when I'm in town. Uh -huh. And you've been there. I've been there. You know, it's the, awesome. The, the, the it's license, really good. The, the license plate says VUS. It stands for Vehicle Using Sun, the opposite of an SUV. Oh, I mean, these, so the, the solutions are, are, are all improvements. Yeah. I mean, if... Uh, you know, part of the film, what we do is we have a, a a camera that can see carbon dioxide. So if I'm talking to you right now, you see the carbon coming out. But you can also see, the, you know, we, we have before and after, a camera that shows what your eye sees, and another one that shows the carbon dioxide that's coming oh. out of the tailpipes, coming out of jet planes, mm -hmm. coming out of, you know, every you know internal combustion engines, which yeah. is killing the planet. We actually have, have it adapted so it can see methane. Ooh. So you can see, you know, methane coming out of Could you see, wells. like, cows farting? Yeah, we did that. Oh, God. Yeah. I'm so glad. I can't wait. <laughs> we, My we, kids are going to love that. Yeah, we did that in South America, actually. <laughs> there's a, a, there's a, a researcher that has a fistula. It's a hole in a cow. It, it's a lot. It's, uh -huh. So we actually take a camera. And on a, it's on a snorkel lens on a slider, and we go right past the researchers into the center of the cow, and the, it goes into the center of the rumen. The rumen takes up 25% of the cow, and it's you can, during a convulsion, it's mis, mixing up the all. It's the, like a washing machine, like an yeah, agitation. Exactly. Yeah. Wow. And you can see the the gas coming, you know, bubbling up from it. Uh -huh. And you know, so the, the people say, well, how can I save the oceans? It's like get onto a plant-based diet as soon as possible. Yeah. Right. Because so. And that's what you are. I mean, I saw you had the tofu option, you know, the other day, yesterday at lunch, they had a turkey sandwich or something. You went with the vegetables. Yeah, I've been, you know, I've stopped eating things that walked in 1986, and I'm a pretty healthy guy. Wow, yeah. That's crazy. So plant-based diet will change the world. 
quite a bit. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it was about it's, it's something like a, a large percent of our greenhouse gases, so it's twenty percent comes from agriculture. Mm -hmm. So if you can, you know, and, yeah. and a lot of fewer the, cows, most of, yeah, fewer meth, less methane. Mm -hmm. So plant-based diet. What are some other solutions? Let's look forward. Let's let's get um, optimistic here. There's a there's a myth that uh, solar can't get us there. It mm -hmm. can. Okay. There's companies that are, you know like. Like Elon Musk runs Solar City. It's the biggest installer of solar in America, mm -hmm. and he'll go and say, "Look, give me your electric bills. I'll make them cheaper." And mm -hmm. he'll put a solar panels on your roof, and you, you know, cheap, lessen your bill. Mm -hmm. And certainly in Colorado, where we have, you know, more sun than the Sunshine State than huh. in, in Florida. <laughs> more sun and more scuba divers, apparently. <laughs> oh no! Hey, you've you've been an inspiration to all of us. Who inspires you? Boy, well, it's just about everybody here, really. No, seriously. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, just just coming here to this event is like, you know, f f meeting the people who put on the event and <laughs> uh, like Lucy Walker, uh, Tom Shadyac, mm -hmm. you know, the people that are here. Um, I don't know. Every it's, you, it's sometimes you feel like you're so alone. Like you're, mm -hmm. it's, it's, to me, this feels like edge work. Mm -hmm. And then you know, it's hard to even get support sometimes from your your family. Mm -hmm. And then you come here and you realize, Jesus, you know, three thousand of you walking around just yeah, like yeah, right here in this little tiny yeah. valley. Yeah. So that's that's inspirational. You come into a community because mm -hmm. that's I think that's what we're, the, the movement lacks is that sense of community yeah. like that we're all in this together and that you know to me I've, like I've likened this to yeah you, know, you get jumper cables to heaven you, you feel like you get this jolt and you can come back and you feel like you can go on for the rest of the year yeah thank you so much Louis yeah, I'm so glad to have you here yeah, as thanks, always Sarah.